Hello, it's day 93. I had every intention of, uh, see, see how, see how wonderful my under eye look compared to normal. That's what one day on holiday does for you. I had every intention of uh, filming something in some beautiful picturesque part of Tel Aviv to show you. And uh, um, I, I don't know, there's something about sort of trying to wait for the perfect thing uh, there's a lesson in that, isn't there? Because basically the sun went in, it got cold uh, and I was just busy being cold and annoyed about it and I uh, didn't do you a vlog. And then we were back in our, to our hotel room where we decided to stay in and have a picnic in our dressing gowns this evening. So uh, you have no exciting view. We just got me again in a dressing gown, another dressing gown. Um, so I'm aware that what I'm about to say is an extremely privileged uh, moan, but I am nevertheless going to have a privileged moan. Um, but don't worry, I'm very well aware of, um, of how this may sound. Well, it, it, it's, no, actually, it, it, it is what it is. So my moan is about the fact that I've got a property on Airbnb, which I rent out to people. It's in Margate. And... Uh, what happens is seemingly whenever you desperately need to get away and forget all about things, uh, there's some problem or other. I think it's what's known as sod's law, isn't it? Uh, so here I am in Tel Aviv after, um, you know, a pretty busy time and just some stressful family stuff going on, trying to relax and have a picnic in my dressing gown. And uh, the person who's just checked into our um, flat in Margate is, has unfortunately got a little problem with the boiler, which no doubt will get sorted out very quickly and will be something very simple. And uh, because, and I know this because there was somebody in there not four hours ago and uh, they, you can't possibly stay there this time of year and not have the heating on. So what I want to say is, if you're ever staying in an Airbnb, please, please remember, an Airbnb property is not a hotel. And I am not a concierge. I mean, I cannot tell you the things that people have messaged me to ask me. Where are, um, what should I put rubbish in, one man? who was from Dubai, I think, originally. So, um, you know, he probably used to having everything done for him. He came to um, Kent to be a doctor. God, I bet he got his shock when he started working in the hospital in Margate. Yes, what do I do with rubbish? You put it in the bin. And then what do I do with the rubbish after I put it in the bin? Well, once a week, you put it outside in that bigger bin. And it gets collected. I mean, honest to God, what else did he ask me? Something else? I can't remember what he asked. Anyway, his daughter wrote all over my walls, so, you know, they can die. Um, and then, oh, the girl, that's right, the wonderful, wonderful young woman who um, uh, kept messaging me. She was a young woman who'd come uh, uh, travelling on her own, and I think she was from China or somewhere like that. And she messaged me. And again, I was abroad, I think, or on holiday. Um, and she messaged me and she said, uh, it was like 11 o'clock at night, she messaged me and said, um, my washing machine, she she put the washing machine on, but no water was going in. And was it a washing machine that didn't take water? And I get this like 11 o'clock at night when I'm on holiday and I think, well, I can't cope with this because I've been drinking. And um, if it's 11 o'clock where I was, then that means it's like midnight uh, back in Margate. And, I, and I've tried really, really hard. Well, I did, I, uh, because what I want to do is I want to sort these problems out for people because, uh, because I want them to have a good experience. But unfortunately, along with real problems, there are idiots who just ask any old question at the drop of a hat and they don't realise the amount of um, um, anxiety that that creates in me thinking, what's going on? What's wrong with my washing machine? Has it been unplumbed by some maniac person that's just stayed there since I last saw the place? Or has all the water gone off in the street? I'm a very dramatic person. Um, and my mind just races, races, races. It's like my boiler, you know, what's wrong with my boiler? Has my boiler broken down? Do I have to buy a new boiler? No, it's just this woman probably just hasn't pressed the right button and it will take me 20 minutes to explain this to her. But first of all, she's going to wait 20 minutes because she needs to sort it out on her own, quite frankly. 
I've got a little concertina full of little booklets that tell you what how the house works. And if you don't know how a household works, you shouldn't stay in an Airbnb property. That's the end of it, people. It's not a hotel and I'm not a concierge. Anyway, it's not the end of it because I'm still telling you the story. Um, so yes, yeah, she says, um, late at night, she says, is this washing machine one that doesn't take water? I think Dyson is still working on that, my love. Uh, anyway, so I thought, right, don't do anything. It's really late at night. You've been drinking. I mean, even if your entire flat's about to blow up, what can you do about it? You're in Italy. It's the middle of the night. So I thought I'll wait till the morning. So I would try, uh, tried to get to sleep. And I'm lying in bed. It's four o'clock in the morning and I'm worrying about what washing machine and the plumbing and the electrics and if she's going to be all right. But also there's part of me going, it's nothing. It's nothing. She's just being dip, dim. So 9am comes, which means, oh, anyway, you know, 9 or 10am, depending on which country you're in, I get another message basically saying the same thing. Oh, yes, I've been using the washing machine, did a couple of cycles overnight, but no water's going into it. And uh, we were going to the beach that day. And I don't know why, I just got really bloody minded about it. It's the first time I've ever done this. Um, this was last summer. And I thought to myself, no, wait, just wait let us sort it out. I mean, the worst comes to the worst. The situation is that my washing machine doesn't work and therefore she can't use it. She's staying for like four or five days. She's going to have a couple of pairs of dirty knickers that she can't rewash. Really That's the worst problem, really, isn't it? She's got heat, she's got light, she's got roof, she's got windows. And yeah, lo and behold, come lunchtime. Oh, I've worked it out. I had it on dryer. It's a washer dryer. And she, she's been just drying dirty clothes on my high heating bill all night long. And then there was the girl, uh, the young woman who stayed there. What did she do? Oh, yeah, she was freezing. She was absolutely freezing all night long. It was a disgrace. She's never been so cold anywhere she stayed. Just hadn't pressed the up button on the thermostat. And then went outside to have a cigarette and uh, this is the second phone call from her who I like to call Petrina Madwoman. Um, she'd gone outside to have a cigarette in my backyard and she'd sat on the steps in the backyard in her one-of-a-kind handmade vintage coat and mulberry handbag she'd taken that outside into someone's backyard with her and sat on the steps and she'd sat in cat pee and and that and that, and that meant you know that merited a phone call to me the property owner who's you know 70 miles away in london that she's dumb enough to sit on a dirty backyard step in a vintage coat that can't be replaced. Probably from freaking Gap and she's just trying to rip me off for the insurance money. She didn't get very far with me. I made that very clear. Um, it's the handbag. It's the extra handbag and you think, oh really? Yes, because the last shower, I just came down on it. Um, and she was going on about cats. So, so, so she told me the story and I said, okay, that's, that's very unfortunate. I'm sorry that that happened to you. Why are you, why are you telling me? And she said, well, I just think people should know. But know what? That you're a fucking idiot. No, I said, no, know what? She said, well, I think people should know that uh, that there are cats. People should know that there are cats. People should know that there are cats in the world, that there are cats in Kent, that there are cats in Margate. I said, <laughs> I didn't do any of this with her. Not until about the fourth phone call, then I got quite shirty with her. But at this point, I just said, look, I'm really sorry that this happened to you, Coat. Of course, I don't want that to happen to you or any of my customers. But what it sounds like you're saying to me is that I need to make um, potential customers aware that there may be a cat come into my backyard. I don't have a cat. I don't. My, the lady upstairs above me doesn't have a cat. And neither does Lorraine, who lives to, to the left of me. And there's nobody to the right of me. It's a... <laughs> Well, am I supposed to put this on my Airbnb listing? Please be aware that cats do sometimes wander into other people's gardens. Sometimes they piss on steps. They don't. Cats don't do things like that. Cats pee in bushes. Cats pee very tidily away from other, place, other people, by the way. I've had them all my life. But also, but you know, anyway. So but that's what you're trying to suggest that it says on my Airbnb profile, that cats 
may wander around and pee outdoors. And so please be aware of this when choosing to sit on an outside dirty floor with your vintage coat that can't be replaced on. If that's what you want me to write on my Airbnb profile, is it? I didn't say any of that. I was extremely polite. You can't, be, you can't imagine how polite I am to these people, these freaking blithering half-wit people that is constantly ruining my f***ing holidays. <sighs> I'm so glad I've got you to tell about this. Um, so, just remember, an Airbnb property is not a hotel. I'm not a concierge. But if you are ever going to Kent, to Margate, you can rent my place, which sleeps for because um, there's a sofa bed in the front room. It's a one bedroom, a little basement flat. It's really cute. And even at the highest, the highest height of the season, in like August, it's 70 quid a night for the entire place. Between four of you. I'm not very good at maths, two, four. So that's less than 20 quid each for the night. And you'll still be on the phone complaining that you've sat in cat piss and ruined your coat, won't you? I'll see you tomorrow, if we're saved. <laughs>